All right, and welcome back. So today we are going to be continuing our conversation on graphing lines, but we're going to be talking about a new concept that is going to be very crucial for us in order to graph these lines. But first, please work on these two equations. Please graph these two lines. The first one is y is equal to 2x plus 2. And the second is 8x plus 4y is equal to negative 8. Remember, you might have to solve for y first for that second problem. Please create your input-output tables and then graph the line. And resume when you're ready to move on. All right, if you're listening to my voice, that means you have graphed your lines. In the aspect of time, we're going to compare our lines together. So in this first example, y is equal to 2x plus 2 your graph should look something like this. And you're probably saying to yourself, Mr. Q, how did you graph that so quickly? Well, fortunately, we're going to be talking about a way that we're going to be able to do that. So when you connect your points, your line should look something like this. It should be increasing going to the right-hand side. Perfect. And now let's talk about 8x plus 4y is equal to negative 8. We want to solve for y first. I'm going to rewrite. Or you know what? I'm actually going to get rid of. Nah. I will just rewrite. We have 8x plus 4y is equal to negative 8. So I'll put that down here. 8x plus 4y is equal to negative 8. I want to isolate that y. So I have to move this positive 8x. So I'm going to subtract 8x on both sides. Property of equality, what we do to one side, we do to the other. So now we're left with 4y is equal to negative 8x. Always want to put that variable first. If you don't, it's OK. It's still going to yield the exact same answer. Oh, no. Minus 8x. Change color. Minus 8. Perfect. And now we haven't isolated the y yet. We have four of them. We only want one. So we have to divide by four. What we do to one side, we do to the other. And make sure we do it to all of those terms. So therefore, we get that y is equal to negative 2x minus 2. Negative 8x divided by 4 is negative 2x. Negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. So now we're going to be able to graph this line. And if you did correctly, it should look something like this. And again, you're probably wondering, how in the world are you graphing it so quickly? Well, today's conversation is going to be how we're going to start to be able to graph it that quickly without using those input-output tables. So without further ado, let's go over today's goal. Today's goal is today I will be able to define what's called the slope of a line by finding the change in y over the change in x. Again, today's goal, at the end of today, you'll be able to define the word slope of a line, and then you're going to be able to find that slope by calculating the change in y over the change in x. Let's talk about what that actually means, though. So slope refers to the steepness of a line. We have two lines here. We have one on the left and one on the right. Which one would you say is steeper? If you were skiing down a mountain or snowboarding down a mountain and you wanted to go on the steeper hill, you want to get more of an adrenaline rush, which one would you go with and why? The line on the left or the line on the right? Think about it. Well, hopefully, you said you would go with the one on the left-hand side, this line right here. This is steeper than the other one. Well, that means that the line on the left is going to have a bigger slope. We sometimes hear the, the slope of mountains. Well, that's a connection that we're going to be able to make here. The slope refers to the steepness of a line. So since the line on the left is steeper, it should have a bigger slope. Slope, And soon we're going to be able to calculate that slope by finding the change in y over the change in x. For everything you know, the change in y and the change in x, okay, I'm kind of picking up what you're putting down, but 
let's look at these two lines. Which one is more vertical? Which one has more steepness to it? Yeah, the one on the left. It's more steep. It's going more vertical. It's going more up and down than it is going left and right. Well, if we think about the axes of a coordinate plane, our x-axis goes left to right, our y-axis goes up and down. So we're going to be using that idea about going more up and down compared to left and right in being more steep and having a higher slope. And we can do that by calculating the change in y, the more up and down, compared to the change in x, the more left and right. Let's, let's take some notes here. Slope. Let's start to fill in some information. Please copy down what you see on the screen within this slide as we're going to be discussing some of the ideas that are on this slide. And resume when you're ready to move on. Awesome. So if you listen to my voice, that means that you have copied down the slide or roughly copied it down and you're ready to discuss what's actually on the slide. So slope. It refers to what's called the rise over the run. The rise over the run. The way that I like to picture it, what's the first thing you do to get out of bed? Open your eyes, yes. Okay. You breathe, <laughs> yes. But to physically get out of bed, what do you need to do first? You have to rise out of bed before you can get out. You have to rise before you can go for a run. If you have scheduled on your calendar that you want to go for a run at eight o'clock in the morning. Well, the first thing you need to do before you can go on that run is you have to rise out of bed. So it's going to be calculating what's called the rise over the run. And as we said before, it's going to be the change in our Y over the change in our X values here. So the rise is how much we go up and down. The run is how much we go left and right. The change in Y is how much we go up and down. The change in X is how much we go on a run. So our rise refers to the change in Y. Our run refers to the change in X. You're, you're going to be hearing your teacher say this a lot, the rise over the run, rise over the run. You got to get it instilled in your mind that the rise refers to the change in Y because that's it goes up and down. The sun rises and it sets. It goes up and it goes down. The change in X is going to be your run. It's how much you're going in the left or right direction. A line with a negative slope falls going left to right. Therefore, a line with a positive slope is going to do what as it goes left to right? Well, if a line with a negative slope falls, what do we think is going to be happening if a line with a positive slope? It's going to be doing what? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's going to be rising. It's going to be increasing. It's going to rise or increase going left to right. In this example above, in the graph provided, this line seems to be falling. It seems to be going down. It's yelling timber. But we're going to be able to calculate the rise over the run very, very shortly. But as we can tell, this looks like this, this line is going down. This line is falling. So we would call it a negative slope. Speaking of negative slope, we actually have four different types of slope. We have a positive slope, which is when that line is increasing going left, left to right. It's rising going left to right. We have a negative slope, which is going to be falling going left to right. It's going down from left to right. We, we read it like a typical book, reading it from left to right. Well, we also have two more. We have what's called a zero slope, meaning that we have a horizontal line when our y is going to be equal to a number. And we have what's called an undefined slope, which is when it's a vertical line going straight up and down, which is when x is equal to a number. And we are going to be talking about your vertical and our horizontal lines shortly. But I want us to really hone in right now on the positive slope and the negative slope. Again, if we're reading it from left to right, which direction is our line going? Is it going up or is it going down? It's going up. It's positive. It's rising. That's good. It's a good thing. If it's negative, it's going down. It's a bad thing. 
But let's talk about how we're actually going to be calculating this change in y over the change in x. What we have here is a graph, and I'm going to ask that you roughly copy it down. At least copy down the coordinate points and the graph itself, or the line itself, I should say. And, and, and when you're ready, please resume. So now that you have the line, you have your coordinate point, we're going to talk about how we're going to calculate the slope, how we're going to calculate the change in y over the change in x. Again, slope it's equal to our rise over our run. We have this abbreviation. It's called a delta symbol. Delta, it's called the change in y over the change in x. So the delta symbol means change. So let me just jot that down real quick. So this means change. And we're going to be abbreviating a lot. So please be aware that we're going to be using this delta symbol, not only in math, but in science a lot this year. So the delta symbol means change. So we would read this, the change in y over the change in x. Well, we can calculate this. We want to figure out the rise over the run. We want to figure out what numbers are we going up compared to how many we're going over. Well, if we're starting going left to right, we're starting down here. And let's count how many units we're going up. Well, I want 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We went up 12 units. So our rise would be 12 because we went up 12 units. Now let's calculate our run. How many are we going from left to right? We always want to calculate going left to right. The up and down will eventually determine our sign, but we always, always, always want to go left to right. So if we're starting from where we left off, let's count how many units we're going to the right. We went one, two, three, four, five. We went five units to the right. Therefore, our slope is going to be 12 over 5. Our rise, we went up 12 units. Our run, we went to the right 5 units. And it's going to be a positive 12 over 5 because our line is increasing as we go from left to right. If it was going down, then it would be negative 12 over 5 because we're going down. Since we're going up, it's going to be positive 12 over 5 because we went up 12 units. That's our change in y. Right five units. That's our run. And we can't simplify 12 over 5. We want to leave it as an improper fraction. Do not change it into a mixed number because soon we're going to be taking this value of slope and applying it to equations and applying it to graphs. And we want it to be an improper fraction. We don't want it to be a mixed number. We want it to be improper. We want it to be weird. It's going to be helping us later on. Awesome job, folks. With this, I'm going to ask that you try out finding the slope of these four graphs. Remember, we want to calculate the rise over the run. So our rise over the run, you're going to see us abbreviate as delta y. We call it the change in y over delta x, the change in x. You want to calculate how much we go up or down over how many times we go to the right. So it's how many units we're going up or down divided by the number of units going to the right. So please try out this, these four problems and resume when you're ready to go on. Awesome. If you are listening to my voice, that means you have attempted these four problems and you want to figure out the answers and check your answers to make sure that you did everything a hundo. All right, kiddos, here we go. Let's calculate the rise over the run. Well, I'm looking at the line of number one, and it's going down. That's going to be a negative slope. So I automatically know I'm going to have to have a negative in the front because it's a negative slope. So now I count how many I go down, and I put that over the how many I go to the right. Well, I went down one, two. I went down two. And I'm going over one, two, three. 
So our slope is negative 2 thirds. Awesome. Whoops. Now let's calculate on the right-hand side. Well, for this graph number 2, it's going up. So it's going to be a positive. So I don't need to have a sign in front of it. We don't put signs in front of positive numbers. We're just going to leave it as the number itself. Let's calculate how much we're going up. The, run, the rise, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We're going up 8. And we're going over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our answer is 8 over 5. Awesome. Let's look down at number 3, this bottom left corner. Well, I'm looking at this line. And it's going down, so I know it's going to be a negative. So I'm going to put that negative sign out there to begin with. Because I can, I can tell, I can see that we have a negative slope. Now, let's calculate how many we're going down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Went down 5. How many are we going over now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Therefore, our answer is negative 5 over 7. And now, this last one, number 4. What's different about this line? Yeah, exactly. There is multiple points on this line. Remember, a line is going to have an infinite amount of points to it. But in the previous three problems, we've only shown you two coordinate points on it. On here, we're showing you four. You can choose any two that you want to work with and is going to yield the same answer. Let me show you two different scenarios. Let's calculate the slope. Well, it's going down, so it's going to be a negative slope. I'm going down one, two, three. And I'm going over one. Therefore, my slope is negative three over one. We can simplify this to just negative 3. Whenever we can simplify, we're going to want to simplify. But leave it as an improper fraction if your numerator is greater than your denominator. If you can make it into a whole number and purely a whole number, do that. If you can reduce the fraction, do that. But always leave it as an improper and never change it to a mixed number. Let's look at another scenario though. Let's say we start at this same point and we want to end all the way down here. Well, let's calculate how many we go down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I went down 9. And I'm going over how many? 1, 2, 3. So I have negative 9 over 3. Guess what? I can simplify that to negative 3. And these are the exact same value. So, so long as we're having two points on that line, the slope between those two points are always going to be the same. Always, because the line reflects the slope of those points. It reflects the steepness of that line. So no matter which coordinate points you chose, you should have ended up with a slope of negative 3 over 1, which simplifies down to negative 3. Great job, folks. If you have any questions, let us know. But y'all are doing really, really well with this. If you have any questions, put them down below as well. Great job. I'll talk to y'all soon.